morning. It's a beautiful day today, sunny here. Had some rain, but it's good. We praise God. Todd, really nice to see you. Yeah, I like those glasses. You got to share where you get them from. Heavenly Father, we thank you for in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We praise you. Where your spirit is, there's always joy, there's freedom, there is peace. And there's life. So we receive everything that you are and you have for us. And we offer you ourselves completely. Our rotten, broken, battered, shattered selves. And we know that in giving you ourselves, we are made whole. For wholeness is found in you. Direction is found in you. And tissues are healed in you. Tissues are healed in you by the reason of the covenant. Thank you, Father, for what you do. We praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Um, yes. Did I say, I mentioned Todd, but it's supposed to be Todd and Izan. So forgive me. All right. Hallelujah. And everyone that is here for the, for the first time, you have been greeted on our behalf, and we want to let you know how much we love you and appreciate you. Um, we are also privileged to have a young lady here. Uh, remind me again. Leah. Yeah, beautiful Leah is here. That is Brother Stan's granddaughter is here with us. Those of you online can see her but we're going to look at, uh, we're going to be enjoying the service together. I'd like us to talk, uh, touch on the topic of rapture today. Rapture. I'd like us to talk on, uh, touch on the topic of rapture today in our series of things to come. Uh, looking through the book of Revelation, praise the Lord. Rapture is a common word. If your common term used within the body of Christ, especially in uh, in the northern part of America. <clears throat> I'd like you to please, as for those of you who like to note things down, some of the things that we'll be exploring, we're going to zero in on three major items as relates to us because of our role, the role that we're supposed to play when it comes to these things. The falling away. The falling away is, is something we're going to be uh, examining. And then we are also going to be looking at the, um, the revelation of the main man of sin or the man of sin. That is the Antichrist. And then we're going to look at the appearance, appearance of Christ, the appearing of Christ, not the appearance of Christ, the appearing of Christ. Amen. Praise God. In touching the topic, the falling away, we're going to look at the uh, methods we're not going to do all that today. I'm just giving us sort of an outline. We're, we're, we're going to be looking at the methods through which this falling away is going to occur and what is already in ground regarding this. Many of us are aware of these already. Amen. The term rapture is a common term uh, used within the church. But that word is not in the Bible. Amen. It's not in the Bible. And then the term rapture is a term that is more known in the North American theology than the greater world. Amen. The, you know, the church world of North America will use the term rapture. And then there are many reasons why other theologians are sort of skeptical about it, because one of the things is the assumption that uh, we in North America are we have this escapist mentality. We like to escape from our realities. That is how greater majority world sometimes see us. And this, you can see that in the way we eat and the way we have fun. So that instead of focusing on, and I'm not saying this to touch anybody in particular, I'm just making a general uh, summation. Okay, uh, you see how our, our diets 
uh, some something going, um, you know, life things, challenges you're going through, challenges people tend to eat a lot. They try to drown fears with food and drinks and fun and all kinds of things. So it's a way to escape your reality by finding comfort in another thing. Now, behavioral scientist tells us that these kind of behaviors are not limited to a particular segment of life. If that is what you are prone to doing uh, in this area, it is likely going to spread to this other area, it's going to spread to each area. And uh, behavioral scientists uh, made great uh, calculations and came up with the fact that uh, North Americans, whether we don't tell ourselves like that or not, we like to just, you know, you know, I don't want to step on toes, but you know, sometimes somebody will say, I'm going to go shopping because it makes me feel good. Not because you can afford it, but because you are trying to escape from something else. You know, and then we get gather in a stadium and there's this large noise with uh, hot dogs and uh, whatever goes with it. And then we we celebrate, spend hours on football, even do all we can to be part of the football, um, whatever games we play, things we do. So we tend to believe in the doctrine, the teaching, which is not in the Bible, that anything negative, anything pain, anything that is a bit sour, God cannot be in it. Therefore, we want to be delivered from it. Amen? Amen? So trials and temptations or uh, trials and temptation are common to life in whatever part of the world you live. But in as much as we are expected to withstand temptation and win by the word of God, trials can come from God. Bible says faith can be tried. And your faith being tried does not mean that God has abandoned you. It does not mean that Satan, uh, you are no longer holy. It doesn't mean that Satan uh, has you. No, he doesn't. I, I want to say that the more your faith is, it grows, the stronger your faith grows, the bigger it gets, the more uh, attacks you're going to get. Bible says, uh, uh, a temptation comes for the sake of the word. Satan hates it when you study the word of God. So guess what? As you are looking into the word of God cons consistently, constantly, and you are gaining and gaining, guess what is going to happen? What is going to happen is Satan will keep coming repeatedly over and over to try to steal away that word. How does he steal away the word? He, he creates uh, uh, opposite, contrary circumstances and situations around you to make you second guess the word. Amen. Haven't you heard? Oh, he said he's so close to God, walking with God, speaking in tongues and doing all that. Yet he's not doing well in that area. He's not doing well in this area. Haven't you heard Christians talk like that? People, yeah. The fact that you're a Christian does not shield us from some of the things that are designed to build our faith. And that does not shield you from Satan. Amen. Hallelujah. So we got to see. You see, there are there's so much fluff in our theology, as much as there's so much fluff in our foods, physical foods that we eat. We have to be careful and wise to discern what is right and what is authentic. So when we are looking into God's word, one of the things I want to encourage us to do is to please suspend the appetite for drive throughs and junk food and allow the Holy Spirit to take you right into the organic word that comes from him. Amen. Let him feed you. It's, it doesn't always taste sweet at first. It is not always comforting at first. But it does your body long-term good. It does your spirit long-term good. Anybody enjoy fasting? Nobody. Nobody. I don't think so. Anybody. But does it do long-term good? Yes, it does. It does. So sometimes you need to pray for some of us who are struggling in that area. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
You know, the prayer of faith is a very good prayer. But Satan also has captured it to put everyone toward, oh, if you have faith, your prayer will be answered, so you don't need to pray long. You're deceiving yourself. That is not scripture. Amen. There are some prayers that you need to pray that you got to stay on the prayer until you get a breakthrough. Because God is no partial if he, that person prayed for 21 days and some of us say, oh, that was in the Old Testament. Now I'm in Christ. It's a drive through. You snap, slap the button, the delivery comes. You would be fooling yourself. It doesn't work that way. Amen. Do I believe in the prayer of faith? Of course, I'm a great proponent of prayer of faith. I use it. It works. But does all, faith, all sizes fall under the prayer of faith? No, it doesn't. Each method is different. Amen. Now, finally, I want to say that for those of us who are avidly searching the scriptures for ourselves, and I want to thank you very much and, and at, at how much you are inspiring us, but I also want to say that there are some times you open your Bible and all of a sudden it seemed like uh, God was waiting for you with the spoon, is feeding you, the Holy Spirit is dishing out stuff to you and you are enjoying it. And if you are like me, you carry your Bible and just keep that nice African dance around your, your house and screaming and rejoicing because there's stuff coming into you. And then all of a sudden, sometimes you open the same Bible and it seemed like it's written in Greek and Hebrew and nothing seemed to go in. Or maybe it's written in some African language that what the language is this that we are watching? Nothing seemed to go in. And then some people are deceived to say, you got to close it for now until later. No, that's not the time to close it. That's the time you sit down and say, Holy Spirit, this is your word. And I'm hungry. I'm not waiting for you to move me. I want to move you. You got to talk to me. Now, the other question I ask you, maybe you answered, but I, quite, I don't quite understand. So could you explain it in another way for me? Remember, you're talking to a teacher, not some distant alien somewhere that you may not be able to reach. You're, teaching, you're talking to a resident teacher. The Holy Spirit is a resident teacher a resident mentor, praise God, and he's a person. He loves engagement. He talks. So we're going to look at the uh, rapture today, and we're going to look at this scripture where it came up from. Rapture is not in the Bible. That word is not in the Bible. It is a term used in the Bible that is defined or that is uh, uh, put out, and the term rapture is used. Yeah. Amen. I know it's popular because as the American culture spreads to other parts of the world, so also the good and the bad goes. Amen. It goes with the good and the bad. If you have watched the movie called Left Behind, I think Tim LaHaye was, uh, was uh, and a few other good people, then you are going to see that that is where that, that it made that topic very popular. And I'm sure you know what, what I'm talking about. Uh, let's look at the book of Ephes uh, uh, Thessalonians here, please. Let's look at the book of Thessalonians here. Amen. Praise God. Anybody with body pain, your body, physical body hurts, body pain. If it's not something I'm, I'm already aware, body pain, tissue hurting. Tissue hurting. Can we look at the book of uh, Thessalonians? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's look at it. And we're going to see a few scriptures and then we'll be good. All right. I try not to take us for one hour today. All right. Anybody there? Help me out. Chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Please. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning <laughs> them which are asleep. Huh? That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Mm -hmm. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, which have died. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, yes. trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud yes. to meet the Lord in the air. Mm -hmm. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Comfort one another with these words. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. That word, kata, is hapazo in Greek. That is the word that we translate and it is extrapolated to mean rapture. Rapture, the English term for rapture means euphoria, pleasure, intense joy, amen, or happiness. That's what it means. So maybe our theologians may have taken the word or the term where the, the, the sentence that says, and there we shall be caught up to meet with the Lord and there we shall be with him. The joy of being with him is what is may have been surmised to be rapture. Amen. Being with the Lord is a joy. But if you look at it in context, Paul was addressing the believers in Thessalonica who have lost their loved ones, whose loved ones must have passed away. And, he, and then he addressed them, consoling them. He said, hey, guys, don't uh, weep like those who do not have hope. All right? Don't weep like that. You know, he said that there is hope. And then he went ahead to expound how it's going to happen. When Christ is going to come, he's going to appear with the sound, the voice of a, an archangel, the trump of God. And the Bible says, and the dead in Christ, or those who have slept, because when a Christian passes, he's not dead. Death is separation from God. And may I say that in the church of God, there are so many dead people. Or there are so many people in our societies that are already dead, but are already are still working. When I say it, so many dead people in the church, because somebody can go to church and not really be a member of the church in spirit and in truth. That is what we call religion. People go to church just to, for whatever reasons. When we were teenagers, we used to go to, to church to find our high school girlfriends. Amen. Hey, some of you did that too. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't raise your hand now. All right. Praise the Lord. You know, so to a point where if my dad was the one speaking that day, we make sure we get the verse because he's going to ask you at dinner. So what did you think of verse? And he will call a verse. So you better read it. Amen. So that at least you have something to argue with. My son is doing exactly the same thing for me now. If I need a new, I would have done better. All right. But you see, there are different reasons why we pursue God. Sometimes people pursue God because they are going through pressure in life. It doesn't mean they are really 100% into God. So his people, he says, when somebody passes, that person is not dead. The only thing that ensures that you are alive with the life of God in your spirit is getting born again and allowing the spirit of God to replace the nature of sin in you. And that is when now you have the life of God in you. But then that is not where the journey stops. That's the beginning. You got to get up and you got to now walk the walk. Amen. Praise God. What about backsliders in the church? They used to do that, but somebody has hurt them now. They don't do that anymore. They used to do these, but they have been disappointed because of the failure or the mistakes of somebody else. So they are discouraged. What about, there are so many things uh, that has classified believers into various layers and pockets. I'm going to leave that for God to deal with. But one thing I know is, until you are alive in Christ, there is no hope for the life of God in you. Amen. So Paul said to them, don't weep like those who weep. He said, when Jesus is going to come, the, those who are, live, are alive, including Paul at the time, he made that comment. He said, we are not going to be the first to leave. It is those who have been buried are going to be raised up to meet Jesus, and then we will, cut, we will be cut up to meet them. We will be seized. The word um, 
Part of is translated hapazo. Hapazo means to seize or to lay hold on or to snatch. Amen. We'll be snatched up to meet with the Lord and there we shall be with him. Maybe that is the word that is uh, termed uh, rapture. Praise God. I'm going to take you to another scripture. Now, this is what I want to say. Whether rapture, uh, people believe that rapture is going to come before the tribulation, right? Some people believe that Jesus is going to come take us away before tribulation will come. That is also, it leans heavily to the West, West uh, sorry, uh, uh, North American theology. All right? Other people believe that the three and a half years, believers are going to go through it before they get raptured. So the remaining heavier punishment, Christians are going to escape it. All right? Praise God. Then other people believe that at the second half of the tribulation, halfway down the second half, believers will be taken away. All right? And there's no specific scripture in the Bible that says this day, this time, or this period to this period. No. So the best thing that we can do is to be prepared all the time. Amen? Come on, amen? He says, be ready, for we do not know the hour when the Lord of the house will come. Whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the evening, whether it's, in, it's at night. He says, lest he coming suddenly find you unprepared. You see, you see the story? Remember the story, uh, the analogy Jesus gave in the book of Matthew, where he says, uh, the kingdom of God is like a man traveling to a far country. And he gave talents to his servants. All right. We call them money in our time, right? Yeah. Yeah. We gave him resources to go and invest. And now he came, he traveled. And when he returned, he called them together. And then he uh, made them to give a, an account. They produced, they gave account to him. Uh, the person who did well, much more was given to him. All right. Much more was given to him. In fact, the reward specifically said, come, stay with me and rule over. The second person who did well too, though not as much as the first, also was equally rewarded. The one who was selfish, self-centered, thinking he was protecting the interests of his master, went to hide the talent. He, the little one that was given to him was actually taken away because he was an unprofitable servant. Amen. You know the story very well. But the point I want to make here is, what are you doing with what you are giving? What doing, focusing on working hard with what we are giving is, is more important about arguing about the time of rapture. Because when the rapture is going to happen, whatever time, the point is, Jesus is coming, and believers are going to go get caught up to him according to scriptures. So to lose your sleep about, is it this time, and we are arguing and trying to quote scriptures for one another, you are wasting your precious time. Go and keep using your resources to produce more, because your final reward is determinant upon the degree of your performance. Amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. So I want to say here, let's look at another scripture here that is very important. Uh, the book of Matthew, if you don't mind, come with me to the book of Matthew chapter 24. Let's look at 30. Matthew 24. Look at 30 to 31. If you are there before me, help me out. Matthew 24, 30 to 31. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh -huh. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Hallelujah. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, Amen. one end of heaven to the other. Amen. Thank you so much. This is a very crucial point, and the Antichrist is walking on this verse right now. 
Okay, Antichrist, they are proofs that the Antichrist scientific proof that the, the great liar who is going to show up is, is going to is working on these right now. I'm going to touch a few things here. He says the coming of Christ is not going to be a secret thing, but when he shows up, everyone will know he came. Amen. Everyone, is that not what the Bible says? Am I, am I the only one? Is it my translation only, sir? Did you just read it that everybody shall see him? That's right. Yeah, verse 30. Everyone shall see him. Everyone shall see him. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All right. But before that, let's back up a little bit to 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. So it's not hidden. It's not some secret thing. Amen. So don't let nobody fool you. Oh, he appeared in Jerusalem and their TV. Have, haven't you seen so many uh, duplicate Jesuses over in different countries, you know, and they fizzle out as they're supposed to be? Now there's a bigger one coming that you're working on, okay? And they are going to use technology to make him popular. Amen. Uh, can I touch some things here? I don't know. Um, there is a, you know, astronomers are currently uh, researching and focusing so much on the alien, alien, the person that is supposed to appear from yonder world to come in here. And preparations are in place. The, 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 the biggest, uh, what do you call it, astronomy uh, center, the biggest uh, telescope, where they look into gazing to the stars to expecting the arrival of of the person that they are expecting to come is in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. So that is where the scientists are uh, and are uh, looking into expecting and plans have been set. This did not happen yesterday. I'm sure many of us know it didn't. It's not in 2000. It happened way back. All right. You know, sometimes uh, we are Christians. Sometimes our attention is focused on the things that really don't matter. Talking about, arguing about speaking in tongues and not speaking in tongues. I'm not saying speaking in tongues is, is not good. And we are focused on who is wearing trousers to church and who is not covering the head. But the, the enemy is focused on bigger things. So in other words, they, we, it's like giving them toys, let them get busy and let's focus on bigger things. That's what the devil is doing to believers when the believers are, are, you know, allow themselves to be deceived and distracted. All right. And this, these are some, some, some things that I discovered. Some of them are saying that there's nothing wrong in seeing who these people, they, what is outside our world. Okay, that it is important sometimes to see how they relate to us. In fact, a prominent person uh, made a comment that I don't feel comfortable mentioning the names today. I might mention names next Sunday, all right, or the, or the upper one. But prominent people said that uh, it is, it is, we want to see if there are people that will bring us a, a different message of salvation. He said, what happens is we, we are not quite certain whether there is, the, they need to be baptized, the people from the aliens that are coming, demonic spirits that are, are coming. We, we, we call them demonic spirits, all right? They call them aliens. So all this fuss about alien things flying out and people, there's so much noise about alien, it's a gentle way to cook a, a toad. Or is it cook a frog, they call it. They are creating awareness so gradually so that by the time this thing happens, everybody is so comfortable with the idea of alien. That's what they are doing. Amen. And it is one of these evil spirits that is going to come to occupy and work with a human being that is already alive and to come up with the great deception. So the deception process has begun. But this is what the Bible says here. It says the coming of Jesus is going to be like lightning from the east to the west. Okay? For wheresoever the carcass is, there 
will the eagles gather together. Immediately after the tribulations of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then <clears throat> shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That is up in the skies. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and there sh shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the heavens with power. The power here is not force. It's authority. Amen. And great joy. I was looking at the scripture where another place where he says, and they shall say, uh, caves fall on us, mountains fall on us. All right. Bishop can pull it off for me quickly. He said, mountains fall on us, caves fall on us. And you can see literally every major, oh, sorry, almost all the wealthy people in whatever field have their homes dug under the ground under the, what do you call them? The fortresses below the ground. What is it? What do you call them? The underground homes for security. Yeah, those, uh, those big shelters on the underground buildings, bunkers, bunkers. Bunkers have been built. Thank you. Bunkers have been built because the word of God is going to come to pass. Amen. That is when they are going to say, oh, my bunker is going to keep me secure. My bunker is going to keep me secure. Not knowing that even the bunker, the Bible says he holds the whole world in his hands. So the bunker is still in his hands. He made it. Amen. God made it. His presence is going to rattle the pillars of the earth. Everything will know that the king has arrived. He's not sneaking in from somewhere. So we should be careful. Amen. All right. And then there's another lie that is coming where, you know, if you watch the outlier, you watch outlier, a movie called outlier. All right. Some of us watch, watched it. Okay. Some of these movies are trials, uh, trying to preempt and play out some of the things they read in scriptures. Okay. And they are perverted though. Many of them are. So when you are watching, you got to work. Uh, the Holy Spirit is in you anyway. So I don't have to worry about that. But we are seeing here that they were in the outlier, the people that they have chosen, they snatch them out. They pick them up. They pick them up. They pick them up. Pick them into this flying saucer and take them to some other world somewhere where they are kept and then sent forth as emissaries or, or what do you call it, representatives to this other world. So you can see. I want us to pay attention to this. I'm not here to entertain us with uh, what is not in scriptures necessarily, but I'm trying to draw a comparison with what the scripture is saying, with what mankind in our generation, in our time, is doing right at our backyards. Amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, good. So we can see here, and, and then he, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. Can you see? From the four winds, from one end of the earth to another. Now, verse 32 says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branches are yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that the summer is near. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the catching up to be with Christ is important. Um, but we got to get ready. Getting ready is more important than arguing about the timing of that. Uh, First Corinthians, let's look at that quickly. First Corinthians chapter 15. All right. Let's look at the resurrection uh, expounded by Paul here or expressed by Paul here. First Corinthians chapter 15. If you want to come with me to, let's look at verse 50 to 55. All right. Behold, I tell you a mystery. Okay, anybody to help me out? In verse 50. Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood 
cannot is this it and yes sir cannot okay. inherit the kingdom of god okay. now i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god mm -hmm. neither doth corruption inherit incorruption behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but in other, we, words, we, in other words we shall not all die not all believers are going to die before jesus comes okay go ahead sir but we shall all be changed mm -hmm. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at mm -hmm. the last trump, mm -hmm. for the trumpet shall sound, mm -hmm. and the dead in Christ, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, mm -hmm. and they shall be changed. Mm -hmm. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Yes. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, Mm -hmm. This mortal shall have put on immortality, mm -hmm. then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. O death, where is thy sting? Amen. Grave, where is thy victory? Mm -hmm. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. It's good. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my br beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That last part is the most important part to hold on to. Brethren, be what? Steadfast. Be what? Immovable. Always abounding in, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor will ne is not going to waste. Amen. Come on, amen. Be what? Steadfast. Faithful. Stay right on the job. No excuses. Paul said, when a, an athlete runs, he's not rewarded until he runs and completes according to the rules. Hello? So there are rules to, to abide by. We live under grace, but not anything goes. Can I tell you one thing? I'll remind us rather. You can never pray to get an understanding of God's word. It doesn't work like that. You got to study the word. Amen. Praise God. Uh, hallelujah. It's just like eating without drinking or drinking without eating. Has its place, but what necessitates and makes prayer effective is the knowledge of God's word first. If you haven't heard what he said, what are you coming to talk with him about? There's no ground for a conversation. Amen. But be steadfast in the study of the word. Be steadfast in the reading and the praying, in the evangelism. Your neighbors may see you as a nuisance. <laughs> Keep smiling. Accept that title. You are a nuisance. Eventually, they are going to appreciate you. Praise the Lord. We live in a very a society that we are so thin-skinned these days that any little thing that makes us uncomfortable will want to run. You, you have a price to win. You can't behave like others. You are a pregnant woman. You can't wear high heels. You can't eat certain foods. You cannot dress certain ways. You cannot act or carry yourself certain ways because you have something precious within you that stands the risk of being lost. And the reward, the smile from Jesus, is that pregnancy. What we are looking forward to restrains us. Bible says a person of vision, it puts himself under restriction. It's the same way. A person in love with Jesus puts himself under restriction. Things that you can do, things that you would have given up sooner, but you say, no, it's for Jesus. I'm not going to give up. The scripture says, be steadfast. Don't let anything move you. Be immovable. Don't let anything sway you. Be steadfast. Be strong. Be steady. Hallelujah. 
Look at Matthew, Matthew 24. And I'm going to stop shortly. Matthew 24. What does it say? Verse 36. Let's look at it together. All right. <clears throat> but of that day and hour, knoweth no man. Mm -hmm. No, not the angels of heaven, but uh -huh. my Father only. Okay. So anybody who is telling you rapture is going to happen at this time or Jesus is coming in that time, at that time, no, no. No, no. You don't. But you know one thing? You know one thing that is very precious that we have? Though I can't point you to a verse that supports it, but I know that the Holy Spirit who lives in you, every time he's moving you forward, moving you forward, he's preparing you to position properly, to act rightly, to do the right thing. He is going to be with you always until you are taken away. Amen? Come on, amen? But the particular date, the Bible says, Jesus said, nobody knows. Not the angels of God, not the Son, only the Father. Is that not what it says? All right. So that means let nobody come with some heavy revelation or words or prophecy or anything to tell you, oh, this is by our calculation as theologians or as people who are overly smart. This is what we surmised. No, it won't work. Don't buy it. That is all what we call uh, deception. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 4 of chapter 4. Verse 4 of chapter 4. Let's look at it, in fact, from verse 3. And as he sat upon the mountain of olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. These are two separate events. The sign of your coming, your coming, and the end of the world. The time Jesus comes is not necessarily the time the world is going to end. All right? Things, other things will take place first before the world will end. All right? What did he say? What did Jesus say? Look at verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. That what? No man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right? And they shall, and, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're hearing those ones now. You heard that Iran uh, threw something to Israelis. All right? Whatever it is that they threw. All right? And uh, Ukrainians are throwing things to, uh, to Russians, and Russians are throwing back. All right. And there's so much rumor. China is talking about invading, invading Vietnam uh, if they don't line up. Okay. All that. And then not only these are big things, families have been torn apart. The devil is fighting to break marriages. The devil is doing everything he can to make sure he attacks your health, attacks your finances, attacks your children, turn the family upside down. So all these are the wars. Satan is winning wars on a global scale as well as on the home front individually. What did he say? And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And uh, you sh I say, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Hello? How, how, how much have you heard of, on social media that we are reaching the end of the world, the end of the world, right? The word of God says, it's not time yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. We are going through this, but it's going to increase. Amen. And all these are the beginnings of what? What does it say? All these are the beginning of what? Uh, Sorrows. Right. Sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. For many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Remember the Antichrist coming, the great liar? He's also named among these guys, yeah, this group here. And there are already many prophets that are speaking for the devil, even in the name of Jesus, 
to deceive people. Any kind, it doesn't matter what church. Can I tell you something? This is very, this is why we need to pray more for each other. Somebody can be really good follower, a good follower of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The inner struggles can make that person shift a little bit and become an agent of Satan. And lots of people are actually agents of Satan without their knowing it. It happened to Peter. Jesus said to them, hey guys, who do you think I am? And Peter, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, said, you are Jesus, you are Christ. The, the, uh, gave that divine expression, answer, perfectly, son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him, he said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father who is in heaven. In other words, it was uh, my father who communicated that to you by his spirit. That was a disciple, Peter, who heard clearly from God. The next moment, Peter took Jesus to the corner. Remember, he's older than Jesus. He said, Jesus, I mean, can't be talking like that. Going to Jerusalem to perish, to... I don't know whether in, in, in theologians would say, maybe they, Peter was upset because they have made so many sacrifices to follow Jesus. They left their homes. They shut down business. So many of them, you know, are not doing their jobs anymore. Some of them left their businesses to their families, but they have made huge sacrifices. And all of a sudden, when they are hoping that there's going to be deliverance from the Roman, uh, what do you call it, colonialist, and now you're telling us you're going to go die? Are you out of your mind? Better wake up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know the way in my culture, they would say they pull you by the ear to tell you to wake up. That was what Peter was doing to Jesus, trying to straighten him up. In our time today, we say, why are you speaking negatively? You know, speak positively. And Jesus looked at Peter. He, he looked through Peter to the spirit that was speaking at this time through him. The first spirit was the spirit of God speaking through Peter. The second spirit now is no longer the spirit of, of, of God. And Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. For you do not favor the things of God. I'm sure Peter might look at him and say, I thought you said God spoke to me. Why? You're calling me Satan now? This is what my thinking. All right. So what I'm trying to say essentially is, one can be upright in the morning and be flat on his or her back in the evening. That's why our responsibility is not to point at one another or to ridicule one another. It's to support each other. Amen. We support each other. There are so many people looking for their, their, their players in the church as well as in the world. But they are also good people sincerely seeking but confused. And this is what where our role comes in to try to help one another. Amen. Come on. We got to help one another. So my emphasis is for this verse says, don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you. Hallelujah. Don't let anyone deceive you. And if you read it, if you, you followed me to where he was talking about persecution. Persecution. Hello? Persecution. The persecution where you, you people will say, because you're a Christian, you can't have a job here. You got to choose between this job and your faith. You got to choose between this business deal and your faith. You got to choose between your children coming here to school or following Jesus. Amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Persecution is coming. And it's something that we are supposed to be excited about, not fearful about. Because every punishment you go through for the sake of the gospel and of Jesus, there's a reward for you. Amen. Hallelujah. There's hope for us. I want to encourage you. In North America, where, including, uh, when I say North America, that includes me. Where if you don't have breakfast, you are seen as you are suffering. Amen. You miss breakfast. Oh, he's so poor. They only eat once a day. You want to go to places, you want me to come with come with me and let me take you to visit places where people eat once a week? Oh yeah, things are happening around the world where people are killing human beings for food now, now in this world. 
not rituals, for food. Where people are selling kids, body parts. Amen. Where there's melanin harvesting that is purer than gold. Somebody want to skin my chocolate, you know, they harvest the chocolate. It costs better, higher than gold now. It's rated higher than gold. See, I'm very rich. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see what I'm saying? So there's so much evil going on. I want to encourage us, okay, let's stick with the truth. Take your truth. Line it with the word of God. Ask yourself questions. Let the truth fight with you. Allow it to take over you. Allow it to change your mindset, your concept. Allow it to rede redefine your worldview. Let the word of God permeate your being. Amen. Come on, amen. Study the truth. Re-examine it over and over and over until a point where you so know it that you don't just quote it anymore. It has become your first nature. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And let's get ready for whatever the devil is going to do. When you read all that thing, all the things that the Bible says this is going to happen, that is going to happen. All right. Now, the final thing that he said that really uh, encouraged me, he said, but the preaching of the kingdom of God shall continue. Amen. With all this persecution and the Antichrist and the wars and everything, he said, but the, the, they shall not cease. He said, the preaching of the kingdom of God shall not stop. Shall not stop. Hallelujah. That's your job. That's my job. And that is what I prepare for. I exercise so that I can be strong to keep preaching. I eat to be strong to keep preaching. Everything that I do and I live for revolves around my the calling of God for my life. The calling of God for your life with the giftings that he has given you should be your primary focus. Every other thing is extra. I'm going to make a comment here. And somebody, I hope you don't misunderstand me. Do you know that caring for family is very good? God wants us to be responsible with our families. A time is coming when believers will be forced to run and leave family. It has happened before. It's going to happen again. Amen. And someone say, oh, my wife, my lovely wife, I can know my husband or my kids, my kids, my kids. Our kids are our world. That is true. Amen. Whoever wants to touch them has to go through us. Amen. But remember many years ago, oh, well, I wouldn't say many years ago, not, not too long ago, <laughs> believers Allah saw their own children and loved ones tossed to lions. Because they refused to deny Jesus. Amen. Let me repeat. Believers saw their own children tossed to lions, wild lions, to be ripped apart. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, and I'm not trying to say get ready for the same thing. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm trying to say is the following of Jesus has to be at all costs. And we better work that into our minds, into our psyche, that yes, this is the most precious thing that I'm holding on to, my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody who tells me to keep quiet, not to preach the gospel, is attacking my very call. That is impossible. Amen. Praise the Lord. We got to get ready. Christ is coming. Amen. And we are going to be there. Before he comes, we have to finish what he has called us to do. If you have not started, like I said last week, this is the time to get started. Don't postpone it and say, we start when the conditions, the economy improve. Economy, even if it doesn't improve, the gospel of the kingdom runs without economy. It runs with economy. It runs anyhow. Praise the Lord. Check yourself and say, the beliefs you are holding on to, are they, how good are they? How authentic are they? How Bible-based are they? Have you compared them with, in the light of scriptures? Have you examined them? Sometimes we pick things that are pleasing to us and we're wrong with them. Just because it, it, it suits you, it makes you comfortable, may not necessarily mean it's true. 
You know what I mean? You've heard of this uh, once saved, always saved, that doctrine that is not from the Bible. You know, when you are saved, it doesn't matter what you do, however you live, that when you're about to die, Jesus Christ will send his spirit to come over and pull you in. So you can as well go fornicating, go stealing, go living carelessly. And at the, the time of your death, you'll be brought in. It's not in the Bible. We looked at it in Genesis, uh, in Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, the, the letter, letters to the churches where Jesus said, those who are faithful to the end, those who are faithful to the end, those who are faithful to the end, praise the Lord. Amen. I want to, I want to peg it here. Next Sunday, we're going to be looking at uh, a little bit about into the physical things that are happening. I will, I, will, I will share with us some of the things that are happening around the world and how this deceiver, the things that have already been set in position, set in place, and uh, how, did, how this deceiver is working to introduce the biggest decept, deception into the world. In fact, one of them said, he made a comment in, in, uh, in his, one of his books. He said, uh, what we are working to introduce it does not mean that people are going to be forced to abandon their faith instantly. That's the word you use. They are not going to be forced to abandon their faith instantly. Okay? So there is a, a, a system set in place that, will gradu that is gradually severing people from their faith. It's creating a distance. But even if it's not a distance, it is calming down people's faith, making them to just calm down because, for instance, see the pressure that is being mounted on us with no reason. Is there any reason for, no justifiable reason for the inflation we are going through? But the thing is, if there is no inflation, inflation and there is no rumor of war, how do you become antsy? How do you become troubled in your heart? It is when you are troubled that you do not have time to think about pushing any, making any positive move in your life. The devil gets the better of you when you are troubled, anxious. Amen. That's when he works. He works better with you and through you when you are not calm in your mind. That is why the Bible says, let no, not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. They tell you the moon is falling, be anxious. Look at what happened with the, uh, what do you call it? Um, what is that thing we experienced? Eclipse. Eclipse. How many prophets prophesied about eclipse? Men of God? Oh, so this is the red Haifa. This is the blue Haifa. The people who want to bring us to the Jewish cult, uh, tradition so that it is more spiritual and it will get the attention of those who lean to that side. Other people came with, oh, this is going to, there's something definitely going to happen. Eclipse has happened. It's gone. Did anybody, anybody lose any foot or arm? The devil will capture everything that is available to try to lure people, sift people. We have to be rooted and grounded in the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, your word has reminded us this morning. And Lord, we are not going to focus on the things that are not our responsibilities. We want to focus on that which is our responsibility. The treasures, the talents, the resources you've committed to us, the time, the energy, the life, so that we can live meaningfully and live to please you. We praise you. We thank you. I pray for everyone here. Right now, that there be a steering of the heart, a repositioning of worldview. Father, that you do the work that only you know how to do in our hearts to bring us to that place where we will be up and about and actively producing fruit. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Uh, uh, I don't know, is that emotional pain that I'm seeing? A heartache, is a heartache. 
I don't think it's a real heart that is aching. I think it's as a result of emotional pain. And if you want, if you need prayer, you know who to reach, you can reach us. Uh, just put out a word there. Somebody can, we minister to you, but it, it, okay. Uh, before we pray for you, God is telling me, give it to me. Give it to me. Give me that emotional pain. Give it to me. Hand it over to the Lord. And let him, let him, let him take it away from you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, anyone who has yet to be saved, we thank you for the work you are doing in their lives. Anyone that needs to be reconciled, we thank you for how you are drawing them to you. And Father, everyone that needs a push, thank you for your abundant grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.